All right, guys, I think I might have found the problem of what was wrong with this e-bike. When these are assembled in China, there is a key washer. I don't know if you can see that little... Let me see if I can get a pointer. Anyway, yeah, I, this is going to be hard to do. So, that inside washer there. On the back, I'm, I'm not talking about these here. There's this, this is a key, this is a, called a keyed washer. It's about that thick. And it has like a square knob on the end of it that fits in this slot right here. That fits in that slot. There's supposed to be one on each side. Okay. When I took the front wheel off, when it, matter of fact, when I assembled it, there was only one. There's supposed to be one on this side as well. There is one on each side in the back. But... We'll survive without that. So, when you put these front wheels on, you can't tighten these like Superman. Because on the motor, on the motor there, there's a, there's a slight ridge. Now, if you over-tighten this, what's going to happen is these forks are going to jump over, the, over your axle ridge and... Uh, wheel's going to wobble. So we got our motors put back together. As you see, this spins freely. Okay, that's pretty good. It's centered in my, in my little... It's centered in the brake pads. Now, the problem... The problem was with this back wheel. This back wheel never spun freely. Matter of fact, it wobbled. And I think that's because it wasn't... Because, you know, when you buy the bikes, guys, it comes with the back wheel already on. And uh, I don't think the back wheel was ever put on correctly. So... In the axle, where the, uh, the where, where the axle sits, I had to grind away a little bit of steel. Now, as you can see, there's a key. There's a keyed washer. Okay, so that's that's a keyed washer right there. And like I said, there's like a little there's like a little knob that fits down in the slot. There's a keyed on that side, and. You can see down in there, right, right next to the, uh, the cam. See it in there? That's another keyed washer. There's supposed to be one on each side in the front as well. So we got to spin it freely now. And uh, the reason why it wasn't spinning freely before was because it was hanging up on the caliper, on the brake caliper. So what I had to do, see all these little washers in here? What I had to do is I had to put three washers on both of these. For that brake caliper to be centered with the disc. So what I think is, since it was, since there was a lot of, it was putting more than enough, it was putting too much strain on the motor to spin it from the very beginning. And uh, I think the motor sensed that and shut the power off. That's all I think the problem was. You know, and it was even hard to pedal it before, too. So, now it's easy to pedal it.
Looks like we're skipping. I'll have to adjust that. Another thing I want to do too on this is I want to put a front derailleur on this, guys. But uh, I have to adjust that back there. I have to adjust my derailleur. What are we on? We're on... We're in third gear. Uh, we'll, we'll adjust that a little bit. But uh, that's what was wrong with this. I think there was there was just too much... Too much friction on with that uh, that brake pad. I mean, it spins good now. I also ordered a. Uh, I ordered a thumb throttle. I'm going to do away with their throttle. You know, when you when you buy a bike off of Amazon. With this company, you have to go through the Amazon sales team. So every time, uh, it's like what I'm going through. Every time, um, you you every time you need well, you could probably buy a part off of off of the website, but every time you have a problem, you can't go to, you can't go through the website. You have to go through Amazon through the Amazon Eahora USA sales team. So you got to look your order up, and then you got to you, you got to message them. So they emailed they they well they didn't email me they messaged me through Amazon, asking me, did you find the problem yet? And I told them that I tested the motors. The motors turned out to be okay. The, apparently the motors aren't the problem. I, I said, it's, uh, I narrowed it down to either the, um, the throttle or the controller, which I think it's just, I think it was just the brake caliper was catching too much on that disc. That's what, that's what I think it was, but I didn't let them know that yet. So, okay. Yesterday they sent me back another message, probably about this long, and all of that said was, um, do you have a WhatsApp? Or it was either a WhatsApp app or a WhatsApp. We want to have a tech message you. After all this, right? So, um, you know, guys, it's like I, like I told you guys, I have almost, I have no time. I have to like chip away at stuff, you know. I, I have to chip away at everything. Right now, I still have the bike upside down. I have yet to test these motors. You know, I mean, I could probably flip it now. I don't, I don't know. I don't even know if I want to flip it upside down right now. Um... But uh, you know, I took I took the rear wheel off. When I put it back on, with the caliper in that same place, you know, and I assembled the motor correctly. Everything's everything's assembled the way it should have been. And um, you know, then I had to grind down a little bit in, in, on the one side in order for the axle to sit in it. And then I noticed it wasn't turning. It was turning with a lot of I would I would have I had I had to really try to turn the thing. So I looked and so what I did is I loosened the caliper up and the wheel spun real freely. So I don't think it was assembled correctly at the factory. Okay. You have to remember they in the factories they speed through everything. When you get these bikes, you have to fine tune them. You have to fine tune the, the, the derailleur is not adjusted properly. Okay. You have to fine tune the derailleur. You might have to replace some parts on the derailleur. Uh, you might have to put a better chain on it. The, um, the that, that front wheel, 
I had to tr I had to grind away a little bit inside the fork for it to be able to fit in there easy. Uh, and the same thing with the back axle as well. So I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna test this right now. Guys, I think that's what the problem was. I went up and down my street two times in mode five. So far, our error code hasn't come up. Okay, guys, I'm going to try to do a video. Shh. Let's hope, I, hope the mailman doesn't come. Oh, eight Caraco just came up, guys. I have no power to the rear motor. Well, I guess that wasn't it. And all I did, I went down my street and up my street two times. My street's about 400 feet long. That's all I did. That's all I did. I went, I went down my street and I went up it two times. And I did that with both motors. And, I mean, it, it went down and it pulled me up with no problem. And then I came back in here again. I was going to do the video for you guys. I turned it on, and it shows me 08 error code. So, anyway, guys, this is where I mounted the, uh, the coffin bag. I got to mount it on there. And what we did is we got the straps underneath these straps so, so the wind won't blow it up. And uh, I'm not putting, where's my other one at? There it is down there. I'm not putting that back on. This is, it's a lot nicer. We're going to leave that one there on. So, all right. Um, it's either the throttle or the controller. So what we're going to do next is uh, I bought a thumb throttle. I'm going to put the thumb throttle on and then we'll give it another try. And, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's all I'm doing. I'm just, I'm going down my street and up my street two times and it shoots an 08 arrow code out for 400 feet figure. I figure I'm going maybe seven, 800 feet. And that's all the bike goes. And then it shuts power off to the, it only shuts power off to the rear wheel. So, you know, it, it's hard to say. A, a lot of people say it's a controller, but, you know, the throttle also sends signals, too. So it could even just be the throttle. I'm leaning more toward the controller, but the controllers for these are expensive. If I'd have to buy another one of these bikes, I wouldn't buy a dual rear motor. I would buy a single rear motor because the dual rear motors the controllers are more elaborate 
and uh, there's they're more expensive and they're harder to replace. A a single rear motor controller for for the Romeo is I think it's one hundred and nineteen dollars. The dual controller, they don't even have them out yet. I'm going to probably have to pre-order one and wait God knows how long for it. If that's what the problem is. And cross my fingers that that one there doesn't act up on me either. So, you know, guys, what I'd, what I'd like to do to the bike, if I can ever get it running is I want to put a backup system on it, some kind of a backup motor. You know, because I, I intend to go like 20 miles away from my home on this. And to pedal this back is hard because they're, they're 150 pounds with the battery. And they're, they're 150 pounds. You know, it's, it's not very easy to pedal these these back. You know, it's like my, um, my hybrid mountain bike. I think it's like... Uh, 25 pounds, you know. So what I should have done, what I should have did is I should have put a motor on that. That's what I should have did. So it's very disappointing. I was hoping that that's what the problem was, but apparently that's not what the problem was. So when the uh, when the when the thumb throttle comes in, we'll throw that on. We'll test it again. More than likely, it's going to shoot out another 08 error code. I'm going to also, at the same time, I'm going to try to send the videos, you know, because I, I, the, the, the video format that you can send through Amazon is very, is very small. And so far, I can't send them a video, you know, and I can't even send them a link. You, you can't even send a link on Amazon. So back to the drawing board. Okay, guys, I removed my controller. Now, as you see, these, here's uh, one power wire. And then you have, uh, this is the pedal assist. And uh, then this is, this is, I guess this is your brain wire. And uh, I think there's a break in here too, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, let's get the pedal assist out of the way. Oh, the brake is uh, the brake's connected to that guy down there. Now, these got to go in a certain way. Otherwise, you're going to see a nice little flash come off of one of these. Because when I connected them up wrong the first time, I put one of these on. Now, uh, I have these numbered, but... And I have these numbered as well, as you see. Now, who's to say that this isn't going to, that the new one is going to be exactly the same as this? I was going to try to repair this until, as you see, I got, I got these end screws out. Then there's screws up here you take off. Then you got to take this end cap off. And, you know... A person would assume that you could just you slide the thing right out, you know. And then you look for I was I was hoping that there was a um kind of like electromechanical points inside this. Kind kind of like some of my solid state CB radios used to have it. What would happen because I, I used to I used to have like I had a pirate station where I used I modified ham radios to the CB band and I would just I would wreak havoc 
you know, I was, I was pushing more than your legal wattage limit. And I would just wreak havoc all over. I would wreak havoc with the truck drivers. You know, I, I would cause them not to be able to get their directions. I would just terrorize the whole CB band. And that's where I learned about electronics. And a lot of my state-of-the-art radios, they had this little box in there where it had like these two brass leafs. And whenever the radio would get hot, they'd close and they would shut the CB radio down. That's what I was hoping this would have. But they filled it. They filled this thing up. Look at that. I was able to chip away some of the outside ones. You know, when I, when I first saw this, guys, I thought, well, maybe it's just a coating on the end, you know. But they filled it up, so you can't repair this. Look at that. Ain't that a little on it? You can't, you can't repair this. So the only other thing I think you can do is you have to cut the top of this box off. you got to make sure you don't cut into anything. I mean, you got to be very, you know, if you cut, if you cut one of these, probably what I'd do is I would cut, I would cut this off here and you can just go in just so much. You got to really watch because you might be cutting into the board, cutting into some electronics, then it's just garbage then. But that's what they did. They filled it up with whatever this stuff here is. So then you can't repair it. I mean, they probably did that, you know, to keep all the electronics from bouncing around. Okay. I don't think they did it out of being malicious. I think they did it just to, you know, just to keep the electronics from bouncing around. But in any event, you can't repair this. I mean, it's going to take some work to get this rubber or whatever it is out of here. So the, these are your wires. This is your brake light. That's your brake light. Um, this is, this goes to your front motor and this goes to your back motor. And this is, I guess this comes from your, your uh, controls. And these two, these two right here, these are so then you can program this, but, you know, you have to have the software and the, um, the device that hooks up to these. So I did contact Eohora. They're sending me an ore form to order another one of these. Uh, it's going to take about a month for it to get in here. By the time it comes in, I'll be, I'll, I'll, by the time it comes in, I'll be back from my vacation um, just hope and hope to God and pray the next one isn't as bad as this one. And, uh, these go for $140 and that's without shipping. Shipping is extra. <sighs> like I said, guys, um, with the connections, um, I'm hoping and praying that the next one, I'm hoping these wires here are in the exact same place. Probably they're not going to be. So it's going to be one of those situations where I'm going to have to be very careful when I hook the other one up. I'm going to have to hook it up. Right now I have the battery out of the bike. I'm going to have to put the battery back in the bike when, I, when I'm ready to connect these two boys here. And um, if you have them all wrong you will see a pretty good flash come out of one of these. You know, and uh, it's not a really good thing to do because you might be burning up whatever's inside of this. Which I, I did, I, when, when, I, when I, I took these off before, because I, I, I took them off and I re-plugged them in, you know, maybe, I, maybe they weren't plugged in all the way. I figured, well, I, let me do it over, and that's when I, my flash come out of one of these. But it, apparently it didn't hurt anything on a bike because it's still doing the same thing it did when I first assembled it. Um, 
I put the motors back in yesterday and I took it out for, I took it down my street. It flew down my street. It, it flew down my street like a rocket. Okay. It flew back up and I'm, I'm, I'm 300 pounds guys. I'm 300 pounds. I'm, I'm at, I might be like 291, 295. It varies. I lose weight real fast, but I'm like, I'm at least 292 pounds. The bike took me up my hill like a rocket. I went, I went up and down my street two times. My street's about 400 feet long. That's what a total of four, it's a total of 800 feet roughly. All right. I was going to do the other video for you guys when I had, I had the camera over by my mailbox and I jumped on a bike, turned it on, air 08 code. And that's just from going 800 feet. And what that does, that shuts all power to the rear wheel. I don't know if I can, if I'd be able to ride the bike on a front motor. I've never, I've never really tried that. But in any event, you know, to carry me back up some of these hills around here, I need both motors. So I'm waiting for an invoice from Ehora. Uh, once they give me the invoice, I'll order another controller and uh well i have to be very careful when i put that one on because the these these wires on here you know these these two connections are both exactly the same they're not numbered or nothing they're not even numbered on a bike they're both the same they come straight from the battery so you're talking about 52 volts Actually, the battery is, is is charged up to like 55 volts. So you're looking at a 55 volt flash if you have these on wrong. So I'm hoping the module is exactly the same as this one. That's why I put the numbers on those quick disconnects. I also ordered a thumb throttle. I'm going to change my grips, and I'm going to change the throttle to a thumb throttle, and I'm going to put different grips on this. So uh, that's where we are right now with the bike. It's going to take about a month for another controller to come in. You know, and I know what you guys are saying. It's a shame that I got to go through this on a brand new product. But you see, the one thing you guys have to understand, you, you've got to understand this. When you buy something that's unassembled, okay, you mail order, you buy through mail order, and it comes to you unassembled, that means it is not tested. It is not guaranteed to operate. Okay? You are obliging that agreement when you buy this. You know, they test the motors in a factory, but it's not tested on the on an assembled bike with a 150-pound minimum person on it. So you're taking a chance, in, and the company is not responsible, or the supplier is not responsible, if it comes DOA to you. You know... What I'd like to do to this bike, if I get these, if I get it operating, I want to put an auxiliary electric motor on this. I want to put a third motor on this somewhere. Where, in case if it breaks down on me again, I won't be stuck. I'll have that third motor that I could turn on to get me home. Because the reason why I bought this bike is... When we move up to Tynasta, Pennsylvania, there's only one store up there. It's a small grocery store. I mean, it's not it's not tiny, but they only have one store up there. It's a shop and save. It's a real small shop and save. And uh, when I retire, I'm going to use the bike to get our groceries. So this has to take me 
down to that store and back up to our cottage. You know, we'll have a car too, guys, but you know. The, the, I'm, I'm going to try to cut down as much. You know, once we move, we're going to be on a real tight budget. We're going to be on a really tight budget. So that that's why I bought the bike. It's going to be my transportation when I retire. Whew. And uh, my vacation's coming up too. I, I think I told you guys. That we're going down to the Outer Banks again. I'm, I'm going to. We're taking our dog with us naturally. I'm not taking the motorcycle down there, guys. I'd I'd love to make a ride alongside the, on the beach road with that, but it's going to take a, way too much time away from me, from from uh, my wife and my dog. But uh, I will take videos while we're down there. We're going in the exact same cottage that we went in two years ago. Also, what I want to do is um, I'm going to drill holes in, in the uh, in the pedal box to let air in. Because the one thing I thought, I thought it was too hot in the air box. I thought maybe that's why that control module shut itself off because there was just too much heat involved. And that's why I was hoping that I could look inside it and I, I was hoping there was an electromechanical switch. But... You know, I still I still intend to cut that open, but I don't have any um, I don't have any cutting wheels for my Dremel. I broke all of them, so I have to get my I have to get cutting wheels from my Dremel. Then I'm gonna pop it open and I'll try to get all that all that rubber out of there somehow without pulling wires off. All right, what I'm gonna also try to do too is I'm gonna try to make this kick sing come down a little bit more I've already ground that down a little bit because the, the bike is too vertical with the kickstand down I'll tell you, this bit hit, guys. It's a heck of a bit. I think that's good. <laughs> 